name is Jonathan Knight, and this is B-Movie Madness, the movie I'm going to check out today. Well, the one I'm going to check out today is a brand new release from SOVHorror.com. And what movie is that? It is the one, the only, the legendary Dead Season. As usual, I'll have a better look at the front cover and even the back cover on the screen. I'll put it up here. Um, but I was actually, I was really looking forward to Dead Season. Uh, for those who don't know, this one is uh, another SOV directed by Ron Ford. And I did The Crawling Brain from SOV Horror, I believe, last month. And I was a huge fan of that movie. I really still like The Crawling Brain. That so much fun. And on the commentary track for that one, he mentioned, Ron Ford mentioned Dead Season. Um, because they were made around the same time. They had the same executive producer, William Combs. Um, a lot of the same cast and crew were involved with this one as in Crawling Brain. So I was really looking forward to this one. I didn't know much about it. And I don't think so. At the time when I did my review for Calling Brain, I don't think Tony had announced this title yet. He could have, and I didn't, didn't see it. But I believe he did it a little bit after I did my review. So when I saw it was announced, I was like, oh my god, yes, I can't wait to check that one out. Um, and I was so I was super stoked for the, you know, for the Dead Season. Before I get into my review, let me tell you what Dead Season is about. Well, Dead Season is about, in a town famous for its serial killers, the most bloody of them all returns to his old ways. Only a recluse writer and his obsessed fan know the truth. Together, they must join forces to save the town from a soulless monster who has a darker secret that even they can guess. Ooh, that sounds actually pretty cool, don't it? And I will, uh, I'll say right there, I actually really enjoyed Dead Season. The thing I enjoyed about it is that it simply was not Crawling Brain. They're both two very different movies. Um, they have the same director, yes. They have a lot of the same cast and crew, but they felt they feel very different from each other. Even though you know there's the similarities, there's of course Random Alone's in both of them. His house is used in both movies, but the tone is so different from Crawling Brain that it helps it make make it feel like a different beast altogether. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want Crawling Brain again. I wanted something different. And Ron gave us uh, something that was darker, scarier, and and goes into some surprising directions in its third act. It gets quite psychological in the third act of the movie. And I was really taken aback by, um, by it because I thought going in it was going to be like a s typical slasher serial killer movie. And it wasn't. It simply wasn't. It was actually much more than that. And although the movie does deliver on, you know, some bloody kills and some nudity and all that, um, the reason the movie works, the two reasons the movie works is one, it's cast, and two, it has a really engaging, interesting storyline, um, and that's what makes it work so well. First of all, uh, Randall Malone, you know, he was in Crawling Brain, Hollywood Mortuary. Um, his role here as the recluse, reclusive writer, um, Swan, I believe it, his name was Swan in it. He, uh, it's a much more serious role than in Crawling Brain, Crawling Brain, Hollywood, Hollywood Mortuary. He was more campy and over the top, and I don't mean anything bad by that. I like those kind of performances, but here he was giving something a little more serious, and he does a fantastic job at it. Um, I was really surprised how effective he was or was in this movie, especially when we get towards the third act of the movie when things kind of go out of control. Uh, also to mention, this lady right here, Trish Trish Haight, who plays the overzealous, giddy fangirl who is a huge fan of his work. Um, she does an excellent job, too, and her character is interesting because, you know, she starts off as this kind of like, you know, like a fan, typical fangirl for this person. And then towards the end of the movie, you know, when shit starts to hit the fan, she really does a great job of, you know, dealing with that, um, with that stuff. So she did an excellent job. I thought she was really good. She I don't she, she wasn't in the crawling brain, so she was someone new to me. And the funny thing is, she's not listed on the IMDb page for this, so I couldn't look up and see what else she was in. But um, she was really good in this, so I'll, you know, if she's done more stuff, I would like to see it. But I have to say though, the MVP of this movie was Ted Newsom as the serial killer Richer. He was fan fucking tastic. Um, unfortunately, Ted passed away um, last year, but if you don't know who Ted Newsom is, he is a, a writer and director. Um, he's done a lot of uh, documentaries, such as like Hammer stuff and some Ed Wood documentaries. But he's also wrote and co-directed or directed um, a lot of stuff produced by Fred Olin Ray, and he's actually acted in quite a few of uh, Fred Olin Ray's um, movies, including a lot of bikini movies, which 
I didn't know there was that many bikini movies out there. Um, Ghost in a Teeny Bikini does sound, you know, pretty entertaining. But um, Ted in this movie was absolutely fantastic. He was unbelievably creepy in this role that I just I was taken aback by it because I've never seen Ted uh, act in a movie before. I know his work from his documentaries and everything, but I've never seen him act in a movie before. And he did a really fantastic job. He was really perfect for this role. In fact, Ron Ford wrote the role with Ted in mind, and you can tell because he just, it, it feels like it was a match made in hell, in or heaven or hell. Um, but there's one sequence in this movie where the cops are questioning Miranda Malone and Trish Hates' characters. And in the background, Ted Newsom is in the, um, um, standing in the doorway looking out at them, and he gives this look on his face that's so unbelievably creepy that it sent chills down my spine. It was really super effective. So definitely, no offense to Random Alone and Trish Hate, but um, Ted Newsom knocked it out of the fucking park. He was truly the MVP of this uh, movie, and he did such an amazing job. Um, and, you know, but his performance would be nothing if it wasn't for the story. Um, the story is really very interesting and very engaging. And very unpredictable. I was not expecting it to go in the direction it took and it started at. I kind of, when I watch a movie in my head, I start, you know, like you know, playing the movie in my head saying it's going to go in this direction, in this direction. Most of the times, that's the direction the movie takes. But I love, love when a movie decides to be like, fuck you, we're going in a different direction. And then they do it extremely well. Ron really knocked it out on um, park with the screenplay for this one. I was not expecting to get so psychological in his final act. And the really great thing about it is Ron um, put um, asked so many questions at the end of the movie, and he doesn't give any answers. He lets the audience try to figure it out. And I really think that's a smart thing to do with a movie like this, is let the audience figure out what's going on. Because... We really don't get any answers to some of the things in the movie, like what exactly is happening, especially in that third act of the movie. And I thought it was a smart move going in that direction. Um, so, you know, I got to give him, you know, a lot of props um, for the screenplay for this movie because he really knocked it out of the park doing that. Um, also, I want to mention if, you know, although it's not as effects heavy as The Crawling Brain, there is some gore effects in this movie that are really well done. It was done by Fat Free Effects. Um, a lot of the gore is really well done. I really didn't have any problem with any of the effects of the movie. I thought everything was actually really done, or really well done. There's a lot of, you know, blood. There's some nudity, too. That's really well done as well. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's not effects heavy as Crawling Brain, but you get what you want. You get the gore. You get the nudity. And on top of that, you get great performances and an engaging storyline. I mean, what more could you ask for? Um, I do want to mention that there is some cameos in this movie. Joe Estevez, good old Joe F. Estevez, uncle of Emilio and Charlie, brother of Martin, Gene. Um, he has a little cameo in this movie as, um, um, I don't really don't want to spoil his role um, without trying to spoil it too much. But he plays a guy that's in a um, basement of a police station who wants to work over um, someone that's being framed for the murders that are committed by Risher. Um, Joe is really good as usual. He's really intense. Um, it's just, you know, a small little part, but he does a great job at it. Also, um, Jeff Burr has a um, cameo. If you don't know who Jeff Burr is, he is a director. He does act in a few things, but he's mainly known as a director. He did one of the best anthology films ever made, in my opinion, called a, From a Whisper to a Scream. Also, it's called um, The Offspring. But he also directed his stepfather to Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Pumpkinhead 2, Puppet Master 4 and 5. He's done so much. And his films, in my opinion, are always entertaining, despite the fact that, you know, quite a few of them had tr troubled production, especially Chainsaw 3. Um, but he does the best he can, and he always makes an entertaining product, in my opinion. So it was really cool seeing him as um, playing a particularly sleazy character, which is really funny because seeing, you know, the interviews with um, Jeff Burr on you know, Blu-rays and all that. He's just like such a down-to-earth nice guy, and he's playing this really sleazy um, um, pervert. And, but he does a good job at it. So, you know, I can see why Ron hired him for the movie. Also, I did want to watch um, mention Rod Ford. He does play a character in this movie, a mentally challenged gardener who works for a random Malone's character. Um, Ron mentions in the commentary track he regrets that role. 
Um, I can understand where, from his point of view, why he do you know, regrets it, but I thought he actually did a really good job. And I do think, um, and this is gonna be mild spoilers, but when his character um, gets killed, it, I, it's a little bit heartbreaking. I thought Ron did a really great job at that. Well, so, I mean, I can understand from his, you know, perspective that it, you know, he regrets it, but from mine, I, I thought he did a really good job. But, um. But the end of this review, or not quite ended right quite yet, but the end the main review of this, do I recommend Dead Season? Absolutely. If you're a Ron Ford fan, you probably already pre-ordered it or you ordered it um, because it's a, a rarely seen one. Um, I've never, if you go online, there's not like, there's like one or two reviews. There's only one review that I saw, and it was a very positive review. Um, I think it was by N.J. Simpson. He did a really good job. He was reviewing the VHS screener of it. But, um, so if you're a Ron Ford fan, most likely you've already ordered it. If you haven't, please order it. This is, you'll really enjoy it. Um, if you're a diehard shot on video junkie like I am, you're definitely going to want it. But if you're someone that likes a good low budget movie, a movie that might not have a lot of money, might not have the best equipment in the world, but is made with a lot of love, passion, and is actually well written and well acted, then definitely by Dead Season. Dead Season is really fantastic. I didn't enjoy it as much as The Crawling Brain, but like I said before, they're two completely different movies, so I can't really compare them. But it is one of his best movies. Um, I, of the stuff I've seen of Ron so far, I have yet to be disappointed, because he always does good work, in my opinion, from what I saw. <laughs> Not everything probably will be gold, but you know, that's the, the curse of being a filmmaker. Not everything you make is going to be good. Not everything you make is going to be bad. You know? But as for extras, what we got here is we got audio, audio commentary with director Ron Ford. Um, he, he, it's much like his um, commentary track for The Crawling Brain, he does a fantastic job of going into detail about the production, the cast, the regrets he made in the movie, uh, certain other things like he points out that the police station, the basement, and the police station, it has a washer and dryer. It's not really a police station basement. And I didn't really notice that when I first watched it. It wasn't until he pointed it out. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. But it's a really good commentary track. I always like commentary tracks from low-budget filmmakers because they go into detail about what it took to make the movie. But, yeah, really good commentary track. Um, there's a bonus short pirouette. pirouette. Um, I did not know what that word meant beforehand so when i went to the short i went in completely blind and i was taken by surprise uh the direction it took and i won't spoil it if you don't know what pirouette means if you do you know what direction the story is going to take but i was generally surprised it, it just was a funny little charming short it was not what i was expecting and i like that it was very fun um there's behind the scenes still gallery those, those are always fun to look at there's a trailer there is the SOV Horror Trailer Vault, and there's also an insert card featuring alternate work. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this movie was also released as The Craven Cove Murders. Um, if you look it up on IMDb and Letterboxd, that's the title that's going to be pop up, because when I tried to uh, add Dead Season to my Letterboxd diary, I could not find it. So, uh, Craven Cove Murders. Um, I prefer the Dead Season title, but that's me. Um... But yeah, to end this review, um, definitely, if you are a SOE junkie, a Ron Ford fan, please, please buy this. And let me know if you've seen it down below. What did you think of Dead Season? Have you seen The Crawling Raid? What did you think of that? And overall, are you a Ron Ford fan? And what's your favorite movie is his, of his? Let me know down below. As usual, if you like my channel, thumbs up, hit the little bell so you can get notifications of my reviews. And comment below the information. Um, that's it for now. I'm Jonathan Knight. This is B-Movie Madness. B-Movie Madness. Thanks for watching.